Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to respected faculties of the Department of Optometry, uh, Smita Ma'am, Lipika Ma'am, Valina Ma'am. A very special welcome to our chief guest, Ms. Parthana Buragohai, Regional Professional Optometry Services Trainer, Lenskart Academy, Northeast, and Mr. Sudhir Das, Senior HR Human Capital, Northeast at Lenskart. I request our senior assistant professor and dean of admission at the Department of Optometry, Ms. Smita Das, to kindly felicitate them. It is with a great, great pleasure and enthusiasm that I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you present here. Netscar, renowned for its commitment to revolutionizing the eyewear industry, has always strived to blend cutting-edge technology with unparalleled style. It is in this workshop, we aim to explore the latest advancements in eyewear technology and gain insights into emerging trends. Now, I would like to invite the guest experts to share with us their insights and I encourage each and every one of you to seize this opportunity and learn from the distinguished speakers. Very good, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Rata Murakumhai. I'm the largest uh, optometry trainer. Okay, so my thing is that, do you uh, you know about the lens card and its revolutionaries, okay? So my thing is that today we are going to discuss about the basic dispensing. What is the basic about it? All of you must know about what is dispensing. So everyone here present, um, for, for one is from the first year, second year, third year, everybody should know a little bit about the dispensing. So today we will discuss about a simple topic about the basic dispensing. Before we going to start about it, so here lens card, we have uh, all, not only the option for the optometry, we also have an option for optometry internship and also we have an option for uh, going forward for the higher cluster optometrists who can uh, handle the 10, 11 optometrists. We can also have an opportunity in terms of academy, we can have also have an opportunity of trainer. Lot of opportunities are there while we are also having an opportunity to have going forward as a store manager. So we have a lots of opportunity while we, you guys when in the future will join in the health time. So before going to that um, basic dispensing on the topic, uh, I will also ask uh, my colleague Mr. Sudeep also to tell something and share about what is about the lens cut. Thank you. Hi everyone, good afternoon and uh, respected faculties and uh, my dear fellow friends. Okay. I, I call student uh, fellow friends because you guys are going to be a part of an organization, right? You are a student now, but uh, very soon you will be a part of an organization where you grow. Right. Everybody uh, studies, everybody be a part of education, but the ultimate goal is to be somewhere, be somewhere and you know, achieve your heights, right? So we, we learn and then we grow with that, right? And uh, first of all, uh, before I start, I would like to uh, give thank you and uh, for welcome us here. 
given us the opportunity to talk to you guys because I, I personally wanted to meet you all. Uh, being an optometrist, it's a very, uh, I feel like it's a very noble profile. Uh, somebody uh, who cannot see, somebody who has facing issues where you know, he is not able to identify, identicate, and you know, uh, cannot feel that. Eyes are something which is very uh, important and primary essential for us all because eyes, what we see, we can feel, right? So that's the thing. Uh, 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 I think we should clap for yourself, uh, adding yourself in this uh, novel journey. Yeah, clap for yourself. Because uh, after you are done with the, this uh, uh, degree, you are going to add values for the people, right? People are coming to you as a solution maker because they are facing issues. They have a trust that this fellow is going to make myself clean and happy. I'm going to see something which I'm facing hurdles now, right? So uh, I feel like you know, uh, uh, most of us know about Lanskar, right? Don't look at me like that. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I know a lot of people are using Lanskar. I wanted to make this session interactive because I'm an HR bro. Like, uh, I, I am not going to give you some technical jargons. I wanted to talk to you. Okay? Because let's see, I am here as a guest and I talk to you. But I wanted to also meet you outside. If now we meet somewhere else in the store or you know, uh, in any restaurant, I wanted to meet you and greet you like that. Okay, so that's the thing. I wanted to make these things uh, very interactive so that I can give you more insights. Now you are a student. There are a lot of things, you know, being, I, I, I was also a student, right? I was sitting over there. I was just listening to a guy, you know, there are a lot of jargons, okay, you know, after studies, I'll, I'll achieve these things. I'll be something, I'll, I'll, I'll work. Uh, uh, but I, I had no idea what, what, what work related to me, right? You know, being a student, we have a lot of things. We study, we give exam, we excel, and then we, we, you know, we prove ourselves. But you now when you land up in a corporate journey, right? So you, there are a lot of things which you need to learn. So that I wanted to give you that exposure before you land up to a corporate journey. Okay. So uh, um, being an optometrist and uh, you have an ambition definitely that you wanted to uh, serve yourself for the nation and serve for self, the betterment of the people, right? So uh, that's the thing. Uh, being a lens guard, we are the most lovable brand into eyewear in the entire Asia. Okay, we are not only selling specs, we are adding a value addition in terms of people. See, now uh, shades, specs are the, uh, you can say, a personality boomer, right? We, we not just pick up the glasses and wear, we pick up the glasses which suits us, right? Uh, we just don't go and just, okay, uh, 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 any shop and just give us some spec which will make me uh, see something. But no, it's not. No, we go in a store, we select specs, we select glasses, and then we buy that, right? So that's a journey we also provide. There are huge number of uh, uh, SKUs, there are huge number of categories we provide. Okay, we are not limited to only India, we have all set it up for international expansion. We are already there in Abu Dhabi, we are already there in Singapore. Okay, so we are not only uh, uh, helping India, we are also uh, in, uh, adding value to other nations now. When uh, Southeast Asia, they are also, there are a lot of people you know, having IOPR. So we are adding those people also so that you know, they can also have that luxury to have us. Why? No, uh, in Guwahati, let's say for example, for example, in Guwahati, we see a lot of opticals, right? Uh, do you think now a lot of people go on all the opticals? Yes, uh, uh, yes or no? Nothing? Do you see that a lot of the, the, all the small shops, big shops, people go there? Do they have their own identity? Right? No, because they are only selling specs just for the profit. Okay? We are, why we are accessible, why we are most reachable, because we are not limited to the class. Let's see, different people has different set of uh, uh, financial strength. People want glass, glasses at 1000 bucks. That's, that's something some majority of the people and students likes that. 
no student, I, I feel like they want to spend 10,000 on the span, right? So uh, we give them that strength and, you know, and confidence. You know? uh, uh, let's say a common man want to buy a glass and there is a luxury store, he will not step up. Why? Because he will see himself that you know he's not reachable for that particular product because the price will be very high. But in Lenskart, we treat the people as much as you know with the life so that you know it's it's not about money, it's about experience. We we generally not sell classes, we sell experiences. So if you see a lot of our experience, a lot of our reviews and all this thing, we go all the extent to help our customer. Because see, uh, somebody is having issues, they cannot see, they wanted a solution. So uh, just buying a glass is not a solution. No, uh, you buy a glass today, but this glass may get broken. This glass may get uh, bent at some extent, at some point of time. But you know, there will be a, some person or there will be a, some a company where uh, they will really help them. You know? If you buy your product at a small uh, a local store and you know, after six months or seven months it gets broken. Or the shades or the color has gone away. So what do you do? You will go to the store and just you know that guy who asked why I bought it. I I spent ten thousand bucks, but you know, it it goes away. It faded. So he will tell you that you know uh, okay I can do one thing. I can give you some discount and then uh, uh, you buy one else, one one more else, right? But what we do, we help them to all the extent. If something which we can do, we never you know ask the person to buy it again, we help them to sort it out. Replacement is that we help them to uh, uh, make it up. All the technical guys are there in our store so that they can you know, uh, rectify. Instead of you know, spending one more thousand or ten thousand else, so we try to make this thing up, make it comfortable for the customer so that the delight will be there. Okay. So, uh, I, I, uh, in terms of why why we are here, we wanted to give you a career path. Okay, uh, uh, most of the students have an ambition to work in a hospital. Definitely, it's a novel profession. Yeah, that's your choice. I don't know. We also in India, and uh, we wanted and categorized uh, a position of an optometrist in our company as well. And in Landscar, we treat our optometrists. Uh, because they are the backbone of our own uh, organization. So uh, we have a lot of uh, career path you know, in terms of maybe right now you'll see what, what this guy is telling career path. What does it mean? Uh, we are studying optometrists, we'll be somewhere and then you know, we, we'll, we'll serve and we'll do the work. But see, I'll, I'll tell you something else. Uh, when you land up in the organization at some point of time, because you'll end up at a certain money, right? You, you, you will be entitled for a package, right? But at some point of time, it has to grow. It has to grow where you can uh, uh, serve your own materialistic thing, you know, your luxury living, your own standard of living. It has to go high, right? So in Let's Start, we have different segments when you join as a Let's. As an optometrist, we hire as an optometrist that it goes to uh, uh, till state optometrist, state regional trainers and state who are going to handle the entire optometrist in the entire region. We give them a career path where you know, they don't only, we restrict them in terms of their technical tasks and technical journeys, we also give them an opportunity where they can choose their own path. If you wanted to grow in technical terms, then it's fine, we give you the opportunity and uh, if you wanted to grow in a business way, let's say you know you being an optometrist, you are uh, wanting to grow as a management, you wanted to decide a lot of managerial uh, decision, we wanted to take it up, we also gave you this opportunity as well. Okay, so this is the progression, uh, career provision we, we give to our own folks. Uh, and I believe it's all important. Being a student, you should know that, you know, where you will go. And, you know, uh, in all the organization, people uh, take interviews, take up, absorb them, but, you know, a career progression is required where you will grow. Because there is something which you need to understand now, being a student, that you will not uh, uh, land it up or sit in the similar position for a couple of years. Because the moment you will join an organization and you stay there for let's say two years on same salary, same position, it is going to suck. You will not like that. Because, see, right, right now being a student, you will understand, okay, 20,000 bucks, 30,000 bucks is going to suffice. But when you will grow with the organization, you will be somewhere, 
you will understand that you know eventually you also need to grow okay so when we also wanted people to join lenskart why because we are giving your career progression we are giving you the world class facilities uh, to grow uh, there are a lot of uh, people i see that they join local optical spy because they see themselves okay this is limited okay i am getting only 30000 40000 bucks whatever it is but i'll stay there it's my uh, nearby location and then i'll i'll be there for a couple of years but see i'll tell you why uh, when you join a corporate the the journey will be really good because you will be having the world class facilities infrastructure training facility that local regional folks will never give it to you with times your knowledge needs to grow you cannot sit and you know, stay there in the in the in the same way where you are standing now your knowledge should grow your skills should grow your personality should grow with that will you will also grow and we will also have that uh, a personal satisfaction that uh, i have joined an organization wherever it is i am not telling nascar you go with all the companies i believe and i wish uh, that you, know, you will grow with learnings evaluation and you know, all the skills which you need to acquire you grow with the time it's a it's a time where you know you needs to get updated with all the technical skills right it's not only required that you know technical stuff because let's say i'll tell you one one harsh truth here i interview lot of folks uh, every day but the thing is they are technically very good okay but their communication is not not at all up to the mark let's say i i only understand english you know uh, and you only understand hindi so there will be a gap guys there will be a gap uh, i i wanted to tell tell you something else and you are going to tell me something else there will be a gap and uh, i maybe i will not absorb whatever you will said and whatever if i give you the suggestion you will not take it because you will not understand right so uh, uh, it's not about only technical skills your communication skills has to be a uh, 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 top notch that you know you understand and sit somewhere wherever you stand you whatever you see has to be very precise and clear so that you know, people understand in english show we have lot of no jargon fancy words uh, but people understand only simple english name in english why name in is uh, uh, interviews because we are only we do not uh, we are not politically uh, uh, influenced in terms of you know, words people understand only common english and you know that's the reason you know i feel like people uh, should not only technically grow but also personality wise grooming wise needs to grow that's that school will give you if you let's say if you join any uh, local and you know or state level organizations where uh, uh, they are only telling you to work right it's not about only work it's all about how you has uh, inculcate all the details in terms of technicals in terms of knowledge wise in terms of your grooming so uh when you join corporate you will get all these facilities we will not only support you in terms of technicals we all support you in terms of grooming in terms of people handling in terms of all escalations in terms of all uh, the real truth where which you will face in real feet okay am i sound very boring No, it's a, see the thing is, uh, uh, I have been that part. No uh, people, I know. I I see uh, uh, people staring. No, uh, I I did the same. No, I I did the same. I really understand. Uh, uh, I don't know what this person is telling. No, whatever it is, no, he will go and I'll have fun. I'll have tea and I'll go in the evening. That's fine. No, I have done the same. But that time, uh, nobody was there. No, who will tell me the truth that what uh, if I join a corporate, if I join a local industry, what would be the difference? Okay, I'll tell you the first two. That's the reason I have told you uh, in, the, in the initial uh, statements. See, somebody will give you twenty bucks, but only money is not going to suffice. It's a three sixty degree involvement, three sixty degree evaluation, which will grow with the company and which is needed. And uh, uh, I wish all the folks join an organization which will give you that facility and you uh, know. Uh, I'm there in Lenskart. I'm going to by the end of the session. I'm going to share you my details, samples, everything. You can get connected to me. Uh, definitely, I'd love to chat with you guys. Thank you.
now we are going to start the session. This is the basic dispensing. Okay. Before starting, let's show. We are showing some videos on the lens card. How it is when it's uh, when the lens card has evolved and how that it's evolved. Thank you. 
So this, I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, show you two videos, okay? So first, it's going to be the uh, infrastructure, how we train our optometrist folks when they join us. So uh, this is the infrastructure. Basically, uh, the optometrist guys who join us, they directly go to Gurgaon where we have our uh, state of art uh, excellence, where they our own trainers help them out, teach them out how to uh, uh, basically excel the technicals when they will be in our floor. Okay, and one more video I'll show you guys where the optometrist life looks like in this car. एक बड़े सपने की शुरुआत छोटे कदमों ने भाग दी मंजिलों की ऊंचाई इरादों ने ताप ली है ये सफर जीत का नहीं उड़ान का है इसके पीछे बसी हर उम्मीद के सम्मान का हर नजर तक रही हो जैसे मेरे पंखों का गाय इन्हीं नजरों की परवाह की तो बनी ही वजूद मेरा आंखों की हर छोटी बड़ी उलझन अब परत में लाती हूँ इनकी खोई हुई चमक लौटाकर अपनी जिम्मेदारी निभाती हूँ विजय को विलियन के जज्बात में छिपी है हम सब की पहचान So the video which we have seen, uh, the optometrist one, so these are not models, okay, for information, these are our good folks uh, who are working. Thank you.
So uh, here all our documentaries, right? So before starting the session, what do you know basically about the dispensing? Anyone can? It's an interactive session that I will ask any of any one of you. So what is dispensing? As you know till now, what is dispensing? Till now, what do you mean by dispensing? Anyone can answer? Please raise your hand if you want to answer. I'll give you the mic. Anyone? What do you know, basically, whatever you know about the dispensing, what do you mean by dispensing? Anyone want to answer? Please raise your hand. Uh, you want to answer? It's uh, basically how he understands the patient needs of the uh, and their requirements of what kind of glasses uh, they actually want and what can comfort them and accordingly how we can prescribe them the glasses with all the requirements. Uh, other than that, anyone want to answer what what is dispensing? Anyone from there? Anyone? So basically, I want to know. Uh, uh, all first year, second and third year is here present, right? So, who are the third year students? Please raise your hand. Okay, and second year students? And uh, first year? Okay, so first year, most of them are first year, right? So basically, did you know the term dispensing or it's a new for you? <laughs> new, right? Okay, so now today we will discuss about the dispensing and second year and third year know about the dispensing. Okay, so you are from third year, na? From second year, I want to hear what do you know about the dispensing? Anyone from the second year? Anyone from the second year? You are from the second year, right? Who are from the second year? Whatever you know, you Okay, you are you are saying that to give spectacles and answers to this all the dispense. Okay. So now we will understand about the term scientific disp dispense. Okay. There should be, uh, there are four scientific dispensing. So, what are they? We will today uh, learn about them. Okay. So, basically, scientific dispensing is all about the customer need or the patient need. Whatever the need is, in, whether he has a refractive error or what defective error he is having, whether what type of frame glasses he need. What type of lifestyle he is um, day to day life? So we are giving the this type of scientific dispensing. So we will understand about that. there are four types of scientific dispensing. Okay, we will talk about it. First, it will be the need and the lifestyle dispensing. First of all, we will understand about the customer need, the patient need, what is the need for him, whether he needs a plus power, minus power, whether he needs, what type of uh, lifestyle he is using. So first of all, we will ask about his need, whether he is day-to-day -day using the computer or day-to-day -day he is in the, uh, he or she is a housewife. So we will understand about him first. Okay, so first of all, it, uh, needs and lifestyle dispensing first one is and now the second one is after learning about the needs we will advise them the suitable for them for them whatever suitable for them is there for them okay and now third obviously after giving them the suitable for them measurement is very important we will talk about now the dispensing and the measurement. So we will also understand about the measurement as well. If there is a wrong measurement, his life, uh, his spectacles, whatever he is wearing will be not adjustable or not adaptable to him. 
So it will be a long dispensing. So while doing the dispensing, it is very important to first have this uh, his lifestyle. You have to know about his lifestyle. You have to know about the suitable product for him. We have to know about his uh, whatever uh, frame and lenses we are giving. It should be a correct measurement. And now the last and not the least will be our after dispensing all this. After dispensing all this, we are giving him uh, we are giving him the suitable product. We are giving him uh, measurement and all. After purchasing the product, we have to give the proper treatment. Some some suppose you all have well, who have purchased from Lenskart? Can anyone tell me? Yes. You have purchased from Lenskart. Now, so uh, may, may I ask you something? Uh, what are the uh, when did you purchase from Lenskart? Last year, which uh, school? City centre. So you have a power, right? Yeah. So while you are using the power, they have checked you, some measurement they have taken, they have suggested you some uh, lenses. When actually um, I have uh, the description from the university and then I submitted the description. So they have suggested you the lenses. So the other you have give, uh, you have to uh, have a, a prescription from outside. They have give, uh, suggested your uh, frame uh, frame lens uh, lenses also, and they have given you the proper delivery also, right? Yes. So they have given the proper delivery. While uh, if it is four are not happening, so it, uh, the scientific dispensing is not happening. So it should have a after suggesting you, dispensing you, they should be have a proper delivery. Like they should be have care and maintenance should be there. They should be have proper dispensing should be there. So this four, while we are um, moving forward, this four should be a very important thing. Okay. So, first of all, while we are going for a technical term, this four is simply very important for while you are advising spectacles to the customer. So, this four are very important. Okay. So, first of all, scientific dispensing is very important. Second thing is that we will now talk about while we are moving forward to the spectacle friends we should while doing the scientific dispensing we should know about the parts of the spectacle friends the frame parts the frame material and the frame measurement we should know i know for the first time it is very new to all okay so we will now simple language we will discuss about this so that you will also have a brief about it and after your uh, moving forward to the second year or third year, it will be easier for you all also. Okay, so now while we know about the scientific dispensing, we will now move forward to the spectacle frames. So here we can see we uh, we already have a frame part, parts a frame fonts temple bridge we can also have a brief idea about that again. so here this is the uh, temple this one okay this one is the uh, lens part okay frame front and the lens part this one is the nose bridge okay so this one is the hinges this one is the temple so we can also know about here, what are the parts are there? We should know for the way, uh, for this. I think second year and third year already know about this. So for the first year, you should <coughs> you should know about this. Do you have a copy of it? You can write it down for all. So it will be easier for you to remember. <coughs> Yeah. 
So if someone is using metal fence, so they have a nose bridge, uh, nose pads and screws. Already she is wearing the metal frame, so she has a nose pad and screws. Okay. So we now learn about the frame parts. Anyone has any confusion about the, the frame parts? Anyone here? Here you are having any uh, confusion about it? You all? Uh, okay. So, uh, we have given you a brief about the frame parts. So, now tell me here, number one, what is the name? Uh, one, one, one. Okay. I will mean, normally ask and he, he or she has answered. Tell me. First one. First one. Second one. Second one. Anyone from the second one? Okay, the third one. Third one. The fourth one. Fifth one. Okay, the sixth one. Wait a minute. Six one. Uh, the seven one. The eight one. And nine. Okay. The tenth one. What is the tenth one? Anyone? Anyone know about the tenth one? Anyone? Any answers? Any different answers? <laughs> First one is lenses or the frame form. Okay. <laughs> Second one is frames. Since it is a metal frame, these are called frames. So second one is frames.
Third is a nose pet and cervical cancer. Fourth is a pet arms. The where the screw is there, it's called the pet arms. Okay. Fifth is a bridge. Six is temple correct. Seven is temple tips. It's also correct. Eight is the end pieces correct. Nine is hinges. It's also correct. And ten is a screw. It's not visible, but here it has a screw. It's not visible from here. I understand. But here it's a screw is there. Okay. So we should know about the frame parts. So all of you, uh, is there is any confusion in the frame parts till now? Anyone has a confusion? So these are the frame parts. I hope the first year students understood. Anyone who have not understood, please tell me. I think first year stud uh, students, if any confusion, please uh, ask me. Okay. So while looking at that one, two, and three, okay. What are these frames called? The first one, full frame, na? No? Okay. Second one, supra and half frame, okay. And third one, chilinga is also has one another name. What is it? Yes, tell me. You can say it louder also. Rimless is also is another name. Anyone from here? Uh, yes, rimless is also called cheap piece. Okay. Cheap piece, it's also called cheap piece. Earlier it is called cheap piece, now it's now that it is called the rim piece. Okay? So, these three are here we have in the lens card full frame, supra frame, and rim piece. So, what we have discussed, we have discussed till now the scientific discrepancy. So, till when now, while uh, we are moving forward to the next topic, what are the four types of scientific discrepancy? And if anyone can answer one by one, what is scientific First one. Yeah, is Second one. Second one from anyone from here. Anyone? No, what is the second one? Yeah. Any anything you, you remember? Okay, uh, let me just pause. The second one is this, uh, giving the suitable products. Okay? Write it down. I know you will come to God for good, so write it down.
So you should not, uh, you should always remember these four things while you are going not only next and also for the under organization also. These four things are very important. Whether it is in a hospital or whether it is in the optical. These four things are very important. So we will know, uh, discuss about some frame materials. So anyone from the third year, okay? Well, I think the frame materials is already discussed. So what do you know about the frame materials? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone from the business These are some materials we are available. Okay, so now we will know detail about the material, frame materials. Okay, so for a better understanding, I will give you a brief about this. So in metal, what is coming? So in metal, we have gold, aluminum, nickel, molyl, titanium, stainless steel, and bronze in the metal section. Metal, these are the frame materials available in the market today. So mostly important nowadays, stainless, uh, here in Lanskar, stainless steel, titanium is there, mainly in the Lanskar. Okay? We also have some nickel also. But mainly we are having here in the light sky, titanium and stainless steel. Now moving forward to the plastics, we have cellulose nitrate, cellulose acetate, cellulose acetopropanate, octane, nylon and polyamide is there. So in light sky, we are having the cellulose acetate, acetate mostly, okay? And uh, we have nylon and polyamide also here. So anyone, I'm wearing a spatula, it's a plastic material. So tell me which plastic material is this? Anyone from the PG? Check it and then decide. And it is a cellulose acid. Okay, mostly in the inline square we are using cellulose acid here. Okay. And from the metal, uh, can I have this? It's from, uh, okay, which material is this? Anyone can guess? Yes? Touch and guess? Let's have an answer, the white chicken. Check it out. Can you please tell me the difference between the stainless steel and the titanium? 
Do you know any difference? Okay, if you don't know, then I'm... Okay, let's hear it from the PG students also. Yeah, metal is this, which metal, which it's either aluminum, nickel, titanium, stainless steel, what is it? Stainless steel, correct. It's a stainless steel. Okay, the correct answer is. So, we will have a difference between what is the stainless steel and federal, we will know about it in the end of the session. Thank you so much. And others we have carbon frame, rubber frame and the polycarbonate. While uh, cellulose, acetate and carbon has a very minimal differences. So sometimes they uh, we get confused which is, which is carbon frame and what is cellulose acetate. So, uh, let me have a brief about the carbon lenses. Uh, so, this is carbon lenses, and what I am wearing is the cellulose acetate. You can check it yourself. It's a very minimal difference around it. What is carbon? Basically, it looks like same, but it's different. Uh, cellulose as, uh, as there is a shine finishing that in carbon. Thank you so much. And we have a rubber and polycarbonate also available. Okay. So these are the frame materials we will we have discussed in now. Okay. So here lens card we have a titanium, we have a stainless steel, a cellulose acetate, nylon is there, carbon frame are also available, and also some amount of polycarbonate is also available in the lens card. So let's talk about now the cellulose acetate. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages? Already you have seen that it's a glossy in shape. Uh, looks like glossy, okay? And also the advantages is that it's a ease of production. It's have an incredible durability and it's have a good UV inhibitor. And also have an excellent anti allergy qualities. So we have disadvantages but we also know about the disadvantages of this while we are doing uh, adjusting the frames while uh, we are uh, repairing it while over the heater it's blistered it's kept blistered here okay in the nose okay so what happened it's a disadvantage while it's uh, itching in the nose like that so it's a disadvantage and also, while uh, if the cellu uh, if the frame of cellulose acetate is more than ten years or more than five six years, it's distant. Okay, and also <coughs> it gets wrinkles with age, so it's get difficult in especially the nose area. <coughs> so that's the advantages and dis <coughs> disadvantages of the cellulose acetate. You can write it down. <coughs> Here in the lens card, we have two brands, Vinge and Chase and uh, our John Jacobs. So in John Jacobs, these are the frames, Rich Acid, it's called. <coughs>
So now, after cellulose acetate, one important trace material is there. It's called TR19. <coughs> TR formed from this thermoplastic resin. Write it down. Thermoplastic resin. Write it down. TR is basically a matte finish frame, basically. Well, uh, so it's a matte fin uh, lightweight, durable, and also have anti-allergic, excellent anti-allergic qualities. It's a very light frame. It's a matte finish frame. It's very light frame. Whoever is wearing, he, it's a very light frame, he should understand. <laughs> So, we also, uh, this is the advantages here of the TR-90. You should also know that this advantage is, it's not adjustable. While, uh, if, when it is loose or tight, it is not adjustable by any repair, repairing. When uh, any repairing, it is not adjustable. It is not suitable for the high power, the springs. High power prescription is not suitable. So we should also know about that as an optometrist, we should also know which frames are suitable for high powers, which frames are not suitable for high powers. While uh, here in the cellulose acetate <coughs> frame material, it is highly suitable for the high powers. I think there is no confusion about the uh, TR90 and the cellulose acetate. Anyone has a confusion? Anyone from here? Anyone from that side? Okay, now we will move on to the next material. That is Altem. I know this is new to you all. What is Altem here? Earlier it was thermoplastic resin here. Now it is Altem is a amorphous thermoplastic. It's a lightweight but have a glossy like appearance. Uh, while in the tier it was a matte finish like appearance. This is a glossy like appearance. But it's an extremely flexible and extremely lightweight. <coughs> it's a very lightweight. You have all have seen the air, air of air, air flex earlier, right? So it's a very light in weight. The, this that material is called the alkyl. <coughs> it's it's can it can easily bendable. It's extremely lighter in weight. While we all know about the advantages, we should also know about the disadvantages. Same as the TR90, it's not adjustable. We cannot adjust with any heat or anything repairable. And also, it is not suitable for the higher prescription. <laughs>
Yes, now we are moving forward to the metal material that is the stainless steel. So we have an advantage is that it's a good alternative than the titanium. Why? Titanium uh, is a very costly. So it's a good uh, alternative to titanium. First thing is written here that second it's a very affordable. Third it's a very lightweight. Fourth, it is a very corrosion resistance and second, it's a colors. So, there is only one dis disadvantage here. While exposure of heat, it can have a high expansion. So, while exposing to the heat, it can might get expansion. So, that's the only disadvantages. Now we are moving forward to the most important that is the titanium. So we have two types of titanium here. One is the pure titanium and one is the bitter titanium. So pure titanium has no, um, only have a titanium features and one is the bitter titanium which have a mixture of the nickel. So these two titanium are the best metal used in the industry. It's a very lightweight and it's a strong and durable in this. So, these are the advantages of the titanium frame. Anyone has earlier has used the titanium frame? Anyone? So, titanium frames is very light in weight. Especially in the in temple side, it's very light in weight. <coughs> so, the disadvantages here is the presence of nickel reduces the quality, obviously the bitter titanium it's talking about and also it's a very costly compared to the other frames, other metal frames. Before uh, moving forward to any measurement and all, so tell me about what are the frame materials we have discussed in now. Uh, okay, I want to hear from you what are we have discussed in now. What is the difference between the tier 90 and the other? Any difference? <laughs> The thermoplastic. Anyone? Uh, well, the TR90 is a mat and the uh, atom has a close image. So, uh, which uh, the frame material is suitable for the high power prescription? Anyone? Answer. Anyone from here? 
Anyone from this? Which frame material has, um, we can suggest for high power? Cellulose. So, uh, the question, why the frame me uh, measurement is important, anyone? Why it is important? Why it is so much important to have a measurement? Anyone briefly? An answer, why it is important? Anyone from here, if you can answer also why it is important, if you have an idea. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so for Measurement is important because of the visibility of the eyes. Okay, so measurement is also important for the perfect shape and size. So now we will also discuss about this. <laughs> what do you understand by this photo? <laughs> what do you understand understand by this photo? <laughs> Hmm? And he's not wearing his perfect fit of dress. First, the uh, first photo. What uh, what do you see about the first photo? It's a shape. It's very sweet and first one is very tight fit. Okay, and the second one? <laughs> huh? It's too long for me also, loose for you also. <laughs> so we should have a perfect shape and size, right? For each and every one and each and every uh, size, we should have a perfect fit. Okay? Irrespective to them. So that's why Lens frame measurement is very important. So whoever is wearing the specs, please check this side. Those are wearing specs. Is there is anything written here? Or it's white off? <laughs> so, did you have any, did you see this thing, what do you know about this, what this is, you don't know? <laughs> so what do you know about this tree? Yeah. <coughs> yes, louder, louder. And we uh, okay. and continuous and one for for the times. So uh, his frame, <coughs> give it a pen. Okay. So he has a written 52, 19, and 145. It's written. Okay. So 52 is <coughs> giving the ex um, this horizontal length. Okay. A size. It's called the A size here. Horizontal length is given here. And 19 is the nose bridge. Okay. It's also called DVL, distance between lengths. Write it down. 
The horizontal length is called the A size. Okay, and the uh, one forty five is written in the table. So while you are going to purchase any spectacles, you should check this three things. Okay. So uh, for optometrists, it is also very important to check these three things. Okay. So it's here. It is already written the A size, the uh, nose bridge, and the temple length. What we don't written here. Is the lens height that is the B size? Okay, so we should also uh, we have to measure it by the scale itself. The lens is by the scale we have to do. So before going to the frame measurement, okay. So can you uh, can anyone tell me what is the frame material here? Hmm. Can anyone can guess? Yes, it's a combination of the plastic and steel board. It's a combination of the steel and the metal steel. Okay, so that is called here the blend edit. Write it down. Combination of the plastic and the metal. <coughs> Our lens materials are updating, so we also have to update. So this. It's a frame material is called the blend edit. Combination of metal and steel. So while we know about the lens width and lens height, the frame width and bridge width and temple length, uh, I think for the third year students or PG students, boxes system is. Uh, do you know about the boxing system? Okay, what do you see by taking the picture? What do you know about it? This for bifocal measurements. So this uh, boxing system is for the bifocal. Okay, before we are going forward to this, let us know about what is bifocal. I will um, come <coughs> slide later on. Okay, before we should know about what this bifocal, then after that I will moving forward to the boxing system. But till now we should know about the A size, that is the horizontal width. We should know about the nose width, that is the nose width. We should know about the temple length, and we should know about the B size, which we can measure by scale. Okay, and another term is there. There is the ED. ED is what the effective diameter. The measurement is. Do you have a scale right now? <laughs> yes. The measurement is this here. The measurement is this and put this side. Look at here. This and to this side. That is the measurement is called the effective diameter. This and this. So that's called the effective diameter. And after that, we can pr we proceed to another thing because this is the bifocal material. So most of the first year student doesn't know about the bifocal. So till then we should know about the lens uh, A size, B size, and effective diameter. Write it down about the effective diameter. Distance between the one end of the lens to the another end of the lens, or you can have a diagram or picture about it. Make a lens, and you can diagonally place it like this. Then it will be easier for you to understand. Uh,
So these are the frame measurement we should check while we are dispensing to the product. Okay, these are some of the pictures of the A size. So now tell me, according to his face shape, which is the ideal frame for him? According to the A size, according to the horizontal size. Anyone? Okay, from this row, anyone have a vote? You can vote for this three who are one, two, three. For whom you can vote? This time? Anyone? Look at the A size, uh, horizontal size, and then this side. Look at the horizontal size. Shape. From here? Achha, from here. Second. Yeah. This row. Second. Achha, from this row. Everyone has a second answer. This row. This row. Yeah. Third one. Yeah. Who do you want to want? First, second, third, second. From the last one. Second. Second is the direct answer. Okay? How do you know? Second is the direct answer. Anything you have observed? What you have observed that second is the correct answer? Why? B. Yes. In the third, I rose and touching. Okay. In the second, I it is also touching, but it's a bigger in shape. Okay. So both of them are I rose and touching, and the third is not touching. It's giving a perfect shape of the A size. I'm talking about only the A size. Okay. So, according to the A size, second is the correct answer. Okay, now we will proceed to P size, that is the vertical one. What is the uh, correct uh, B size or correct height for this type of customer? Anyone? Row wise, I will ask. This row, anyone? What? Second one. Okay. What? Anyone on the board? Anyone from this row? This row, second one. Okay. Oh, first one you are. Okay. Here, from this row, <laughs> first, second, third, I think nobody will fall for third one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyone from here? First one, okay. Uh, anyone from uh, here? So, first one, okay. Okay, anyone from this row? First, second, third? 
Anyone from here? Second. This row? Second one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who has vote for the first one? Correct answer. Second one is the more uh, frame height. Okay? And third one is nobody has voted for it. Okay, according to the nose range, who, what will be the correct one? According to the nose range. Everybody has the same answer or a different answer? Anyone has a different, a different answer like second or first? Third? Third one is the right answer. Okay, look at the temple length and vote for it. Look it very properly, huh? And then decide. Size, B size, the post space, and the temple length. Okay, now we will have a clear view of the frame selection. Okay, how while uh, while the customer comes, what are the frame selection we should have to keep in mind? Obviously, prescription should be a important one you should keep in mind while we are dispensing for a frame as i already discussed we cannot give high power to the material like altem and tr90 right we have to suggest them a cellular acetate or either option metal we can also give metal but in metal what happened uh, <laughs> the high power is visible okay so in class of minus power it's get visible so it's a better that we should give a acetyl. First preference should be a acetyl one. So according to the prescription, we should uh, we should give them a frame selection. We have already discussed about many several times that the occupation and lifestyle also very important role is about them. 
If someone suggests you, you are a student, right? If someone has given you photo back in lenses, you are you are here, you are six to seven hours, you are here only. Okay? They are giving you the photosomatic lenses. Or any which are not UV protected lenses or it's a computer protected lenses, then it will be difficult for you. So that's why occupation is very important. And also Lifestyle is also very important. So both occupation and lifestyle, we have to give them the frame selection. Okay. Third and fourth is obviously the frame shape. Okay. For uh, the face like me, it's a round shape, right? For me, the frame shape should be, spectacle should be square or rectangle. It should be. Okay? For the space like diamond cut, <coughs> cat eye shape are important. Okay? According to the frame shape, it is very important. Okay? So for a round face, it's always rectangle, square shaped and all the hexagonal shape are look good. And for a diamond shape, it is one cat eye. And also for the oval shape, cat eye and the square is looks good. Okay, you can write it down. But I have a brief about it. And also the cosmetically fit and current classes. We should also consider about the what is his or her previous classes. So that's how we have to cho uh, choose our frame selection. <coughs> Now, how we should shape the frame fit to the customer face? Let's check it out. Okay. While we are suggesting them the frame, always we should check the eyes. This eyes, we should check it. Is it horizontally aligned or not? Is it touching the eye, uh, eyebrows or not? While it is touching the eyebrow, it is not the suitable lenses. Like this. If it is like this, that's it. Eyebrows are showing. Sometimes what happens, some frame has so it's like this. One eyebrow is showing, one is not showing. It is also not the perfect frame. So always we have to check the eye. Eyes and the eye, eyebrows. Okay? We should check this. Second, we have to check the cheeks. Okay? While checking the cheeks, everybody who are wearing the spectacles, please have a like this. Is it touching the cheeks or not? Okay, uh, the, who are wearing the spectacles, please come here. Please come here. Those who are wearing spectacles. How? Come here, you are wearing spectacles. I always see. Come here, come here. Everybody, please come here who are wearing specs. One by one. Any uh, five volunteers I need. Any five can come. Come. <laughs> I need to check. Is it highly fit or not? Come. Come. Okay, three, two more. <laughs> come. Come for lower. I'm not giving any punishment. <laughs> Just to check you. Come, you can come.
Okay, smile. <laughs> like this. Smile, smile. Your cheeks are touching. Smile. <laughs> okay. Uh, yours are touching the edge. This is not the ideal one. Yours are mostly touching. These are also touching, but not that. Yours are perfect. Okay? So, always check by smiling. Is it touching or not? While normally also, while not touching also, it is touching here. Right? So, we should always take a frame which not touch. Okay? I'm smiling. It's not touching. Okay? Always, you have to check it. So, smile, it's for you guys are not smiling, smile, yes, <laughs> we should check why, <laughs> we should uh, smile, so we have to check that also, come see, why not remove his specs only? <laughs> So all of you have uh, got the knowledge of chicks, right? You should always check this thing. Okay? Eyes and chicks are also important to check and other than that, nose is also important. Okay? Your it's, uh, nose beads are covering or not, it's also very important. Temple length is also very important and also ears is also important. So, this in here, in our lens card, we call the five star frame selection. Type it down. <coughs> These are the five star frame selection. Eyes, cheeks, ears, temple and nose. Yes, these are all the five star frame process. You can see here eyebrow level, you can see here the cheekbone is touching or not. We can see the nose pad. Okay, we can see the pupil placement, we can see the ear bend. Okay. <laughs> so these are the five separate process we should check. So what is the current dispensing here? According to all A size, B size, everything. So this is the perfect one. Let's hold it. Let's hold for it. Yeah. 
ओके Uh, 
Okay, <coughs> so uh, let's continue. What do you know? By seeing this picture, what do you have a mind? Hmm? What is this frame called? Frame brand? Raven. Okay. What do you are thinking in mind? Anything compared to uh, our now frame? What is there is extra there is? <coughs> so, uh, in earlier times, this hole is made for uh, hunting. Okay, while hunting, uh, some uh, villagers or some for, um, forest people used to keep their cigarettes here, in the here. Here. Okay, so that is an interesting one. The raven has launched earlier like this. Okay, so if, if you don't know, then this is the one about the raven. Okay, the hole is specially designed for that earlier. Okay, now tell me his name. Don't uh, tell me the names of Pythagoras and Isaac. Anyone? Go. From there? He said, Daniel, I'm giving you some clue. He said, Daniel. Anyone can answer? Rather than searching from Google, can this answer? Anyone from here? Okay, his name is Salvador Di Martin. Okay, he discovered his practicals. Salvador okay. Di Martin. You say tell you. Okay, now what we have discussed in now, can anyone can have a brief about it? What we have discussed in now? Okay, uh, we have discussed the uh, parts of the frame. Uh, we have discussed about scientific dispensing. Uh, we have discussed about the materials available, uh, metals, plastics and other materials. Uh, followed by that, we have uh, gone through some advantages and disadvantages of materials. Then we have uh, discussed about the measurement of the frame. Then the frame selection, then how to check the frame fit. We have now already discussed about the lifestyle dispensing and also about the frame selection and frame fit. Now we will move forward to the lenses. Okay, what are the different type of lenses and that is? Okay, we will discuss about this materials also and also about this property. Okay, do you know anything about this? Third year students or PG students, what is this? What is this triangle called? Prism. So, everybody has a brief idea about the apex and the base, right? It's also 
uh, class 10 people, 12 people also know about this, the prism amount of this. So our lens is also about the prism. Okay? Convex lens and concave lens. So tell me, concave lens are based in prism or based out prism? Anyone? Do you know about the base in or base out prism? For? Concave lens. Okay, and for convex? First, the students also should know about it or it's. Okay, if you don't know, then I will give a brief about this. So, what is this lens called? The first one. That's called the convex lenses. Class 10 or 12 students also know. Okay, that's a base in or base out? Base in prism. Okay, convex lens has a base in prism. And concave has a base out prism. You can make a diagram of this also. It will be easier for you. The elongated one is called the apex and the straight line is called the base. If you have any confusion. When moving forward to the lenses, we should know about the optical center. Has anyone have seen the lenses? Seen the blank lenses? Anyone have seen? Who has seen? Reasons. Okay, this is the blank one. Okay. The one that is showing the blank one. We always take a people distance measurement. Okay, people distance is for the center of the eyes. Here, the center of the eyes. Okay, we also take the measurement here. So, this is called the optical center, which is also denoted as OC. Okay, <laughs> while cutting the shape, we determine by the optical center. You should determine here, optical center. So, here, while cutting, we can check here. The optical center. So tell me, in this diagram, is it the correct optical center? And the diagram two? Diagram two? Which is the correct optical center? Diagram this one or this one? So, optical center should match the pupil of the eyes. So, which is the correct measurement? Two or one? Anyone here? Here? Two. Here? From here, two or one? Yes. Okay, the two is the right one. It's aligned with the right. Okay. It should align. From here, you can check. If you have a confusion, you can check here. It should align. So, in uh, lenses, it is optical center, and while checking it, it is a pupillary center. Okay? 
Capillary center should be matched with the optical center. Write it down the OC is the optical center. And the capillary uh, center PC. So that's why capillary distance is important. Uh, whoever has purchased from Lenskart, uh, they have taken your capillary distance, right? Everyone. So while you are checking in the local optical, has anyone has uh, uh, taken the capillary distance measurement? Anyone? First purchase from another local company. No, no. They give you like the, the details and all that they present to check the people distance, right? So in Lenskart, we always check the capillary distance. Whether this is single vision, bifocal progressive, it's also important is this, but for single vision also, we always check the capillary distance here. So that's why in our lens, uh, capillary distance is very important. If the, see, in the diagram A, the optical center is not matching with our pupillary uh, center. So what can might happen? What are the consequences might happen? What are the consequences might happen here? Anyone? Difficulty in focusing and saying, number two, there should be a headache problem, uh, nausea, all type of astronomical symptoms should be there. So that's why people's uh, optical center should be lightly uh, matched with the pupillary center. <coughs> okay. What do you mean by this all? Anything have any idea? This denotes about the thickness of the lens. Okay? <laughs> Lower the value of the uh, thickness, more thicker is that. So 1.49 has more thicker and 1.74 is more thinness. Okay? Lower value of uh, uh, refractive index, more thicker will be the lenses. This all denotes the refractive index, right? These all are reflective in this writing down. Now we will discuss about the all have written now. Okay. Now we will discuss about the lens material. So lens material first it is CR39. Write it down. CR39. It's a columbia resin. Okay. Its index is 1.5, it is thicker in nature. Okay, and its MA value is 58. What is the normal MA value? Can anyone can answer from the 30 students or PC students? What is the normal MA value? Normal human MA value? What 
What they mean by everywhere? Then can you just uh, define it? Anyone? Okay. <coughs> Anyone here that I have a value? So what is the human eye value? Yeah, normal human eye value is 45. Okay, so here the error value is 58. And the index is 1.5. So here the advantages here has a impact resistance, uh, high optical clarity is there, and it's also a tin friendly. Whatever they give coating, it is a tin friendly. What do you know the term impact resistance? Anyone? It is uh, simply, it is easily not breaking. Okay? And also, it has a high optical clarity. Then the advantage is that it's a thick lenses. Okay? It's a thicker in nature. So that's why it is not recommended for the high power. Okay? The main difference is that. Uh, now, second one is the mid C resin. So, MR series has different type of MR series are available here, which have a high refractive index, high AV number, and high impact resistance with a slow specific gravity. So, this is the chart available here. We have in our in here MR8 series, MR7, MR10, and MR174. So according to the error number, look at the error number. Okay, here in the MR series. Okay, which will be suitable for our human eye? We know already that our normal human eye has an error number of forty-five. Okay, which which is a close enough here? Which will be suitable for our eyes? According to the error number, I am talking about according to the error number, MR8. not according to MR8. MR8. Yes, the correct answer is MR8 is closer to our human error number. Okay, so according to the error number, MR8 is it should be the good fit. Okay, and also why uh, according to our thickest thinnest lens, which will be our uh, recommend. According to our high power. Okay. So, uh, why we don't recommend ringless in the MR174? Any answers? Why we don't recommend ringless? Anyone has a answers for? Why we don't recommend in MR answer? If the refractive index is high, then the lens will be thin. So if, if it falls, then there will be chances of breach. Yes. Correct answer. So itself, MR 174 is the thinnest lens. Okay. <coughs> so it has also not uh, good in the impact resistance also. So it can easily breakable in every place. So for the high power, we don't recommend this easily. Okay, it's only about his his or her views. Okay, but we generally don't recommend in rims. So according to this table, we should give them the perfect distance. You can write it down the table also. I will give the photo. So according to that, wherever you will go to any organization, this 
chart is very important because MS series is available in all of our opticals. Okay. Yes, now we will talk about refractive index. See, not only about the thinness or the thickest lenses, we should also consider about the frame. If the frame size is bigger and you are giving the uh, high index lenses, it is not um, like, uh, it will not be uh, suitable because uh, it will be heavy in size, okay? Uh, you, you are using higher, bigger frames and you are giving them the uh, refractive index of 1 to 7, it will look bigger only. Because always we have to check, depends on the frame size and the customer reading. It's all always depend on this. Okay? We know that lower index is the thicker and the higher index are the thinner. So 1.6, 1.67 and 1.74 are considered as the high index. Considered. Okay? Lower than that, these are all the lower index. So, what are the advantages here for the high index? Uh, thinner, lighter, cosmetically appealing, or wear, wearing comfort. So, anyone has a uh, minus power? Anyone has minus power of more minus power? So, uh, so this is the one. Uh, what are you using? Can I teach you? So you are uh, you are using a famous uh, wood, but the lenses you are you are not using the high high index. You are using no, no. Okay. So uh, at, still the frame is small. Okay, it is not showing the thickness easily. Okay, but for high uh, for high uh, power, we should always use the high index lenses at least one point six to one point seven. Okay, so for higher power, always use high index lenses. Everyone is written or. Okay, now we will proceed about the aspheric lenses. Anyone has a deep idea about some aspheric lenses? What do you mean by aspheric lenses? See, I will give you one mobile example. Okay, simple mobile example. This is the normal mobile here. Okay, we have a screen of limited of central area only. We don't have a side area. Okay? Peripheral area is blocked here. Now, look at this mobile. Any differences there? Peripheral area is also visible. Same like in the lenses. Peripheral area is not restricted in the aspheric area. Edge to edge and cut to cut distortion is cut off. Okay? So these are called aspheric lenses. Now today here, aspheric lenses are here in the market. Okay, as you have seen here, spherical lenses, side, uh, side peripheral area is cut off. Why? In the aspheric lenses here, all the area are fit. Okay, so each to each cut to cut distortion is there and it also reduces the spherical elevation. Now I am asking you a question. What is spherical aberration? Anyone? What do you mean by spherical aberration? Uh, anyone will answer? Yes. Anyone from here? What is spherical elevation? 
Anything uh, sign uh, optical then any anything okay so well, suppose uh, our uh, spherical emission is nothing but the extra light coming out from the side to side. Okay, simple language. Okay, side to side uh, distortion is happening uh, by using the spher spherical lenses. So here we reduce some spherical evolution. Okay, side to side distortion we cut off. So here in the ordinary lenses, you can see the thickness here in the ordinary lenses. While in the aspheric lenses, the thickness is thinner, lighter and flatter. Okay, why? Because the side portion also gets flattered. While in the ordinary lens, the side portion is not flattered. As nowadays, we are using spherical, aspheric lenses. Now we will move forward to the lens coating. Why it is important? Because obviously if mobile is important for our protection, appearance, clarity, then also lens is also very important for the protection, appearance, clarity and also for the durability. So whoever has purchased from lens card, what are the specific lenses you are using? Any idea? Normal lenses or anything? Yes, your what lens packages you are using? Blue card, basically. Thank you. Same. So, what do you know about the blue card? Any idea? Anything? Maybe also you can say. Whatever they have, uh, I'll tell you, you can speak that. Same, same, they have given you that one. Huh? Okay. Now we will talk about what are blu rays. Okay. You know about the blu rays, 90% is coming from the computer. We don't know about briefly about the blue card lenses. Okay, now we will know briefly about the coating about. First of all, before going to the blue card lenses, we will talk about the main anti-reflection coating. Everyone is wearing anti-reflection coating lenses. So you can see from the picture only while using the uncoated glasses. Lights are visible, restricted. Okay, it's not giving you the clarity of vision. Okay, all the lights are reflecting here, so it's not giving you the clarity of vision. And also, why uh, you have a high power? Okay, if you are not using the anti reflection coating, you cannot visible the eyes of the person also. Okay, so here, entry, uh, you can see the difference here by seeing the picture only. So here it is a thin multi-layer coating of the layer surface. So how, what is the advantages here? Here we can increase the light transmission, also contrast, and also cosmetic look. Look, and also here in the picture you have seen the host images there. We cannot visible what is the building is, where is the building, where is the street. Yeah, it's giving you the host image. While in the anti-reflection coating it is not giving you the host image. Okay, so every lenses have nowadays anti-reflection coating. So it's very important. Uh, for every high power, anti-reflection is very important.
Other than anti-reflection coating, we also have water and sweat repellent, okay, which can, uh, which also have a smudge, reducing the smudge resistance is also there. While we are uh, talking about the term resistance, it's not the smudge free. Resistance means it has a protection of smudge, but it is about your use, okay. If you are using it with handle with care, okay. So it is resistance, not the free. It's not uh, smudge free or it's not uh, like uh, water and dust repellent. Repellent, resistance, dust resistance is resistance. Okay, not free. Scratch free, scratch face is very important. When communicate to customer, it is very important. The scratch free is different, scratch face is different. Different. Here, the in the lenses, nobody has a scratch free. You have a scratch resistance. Okay. Okay. Now we will talk about some blue card lenses. As already, someone has discussed, the blue card is coming from the computer, mobile, it's also come from fluorescent light, okay, it's also come from CFL bulbs, it's also come from LED lights, flat skin, LED TV, and also obviously we all communicate with computer, monitors, smartphones and tablets, okay, what are the sources coming from the blue card lenses, okay. <clears throat> Not only it's restricted to laptop or computer, it's also from the LED light source. Okay, now we will talk about some blue, good blue and bad. See, blue is an important color in our life. Good blue is better for us, but bad blue is not better for us. So we should have a blue color in nature, but have a good blue is important, but bad blue is not important, it is harmful for us. So we will now talk about the good blue, okay? Good blue, which are, uh, which are very important, blue color should be important, right? Good blue is, it puts the elements and elements the mood, okay? Blue is important for them. It is also important for the memory and cognitive function. It is also important for development of children. It is also important for the circulars, circular wheel. So basically, blue color is very important. Okay? Wherever it is coming from the sunlight or whatever, it is very important. The blue is important. So that's why 90% cut off. The harmful blue lights are cut off. Not the blue. Harmful blue lights, which are coming from the CFL, which are coming from the computer. Okay, we should know about the blue, good blue and bad blue. Okay, blue is important, that's why it is not cut off 100%. Okay, 90% or 95% is cut off, it's not 100% cut off. Why? Blue color is, itself is important. Okay, while coming from the sun, uh, sunlight, the winter color has a blue color itself, right? That blue is important. So we should know about the good blue and bad blue. Okay, somebody will ask why it is not 100% cut off. Okay, we can give them the answer that the blue itself color is important. It's coming from the sunlight, with zero color is important. Okay, so what black blue, uh, bad blue colors are coming for? It's coming from our screen, it's coming from our safer lights, which are unwanted one. We should avoid that unwanted blue lights, not the whole blue color. Okay, so bad blue. We all know why bad blue is a digital eye strain which uh, occur. It also may, while giving so much of uh, blue, uh, harmful blue color, so it can might give you the cataract formation in the middle age or old age people. Okay, it might lead to some retinal degeneration and it can also affect our sleep and wake cycle while using game uh, computer for a longer time for, um, suppose now, nowadays, like you switch on your uh, light and you are using mobile, or you are using PUBG and all, okay? So that's why it affects the wake and sleep cycle. Anyone who is using uh, your PUBG and all? Hmm? 
if uh, if someone is playing now, they will know that it affects the sleep and wake cycle. Okay, it gets eye strain. Obviously, it gets eye strain also. It also affects the wake sleep and wake cycle. So, who are um, gamer now? They know exactly what is happening. So they easily get. Our I blue card put a uh, blue light harmful stream. So that's why good blue and bad blue it should be differentiated. I think everyone has noted them for the good blue and bad blue. Now another quiz time. Are you ready for the quiz? Hmm? Just say no. What are all the possible index available in the world? We have talked about the index, na? So what are the index? Tell me. Easy question. Index. What are the possible index? Tell me the name of the refractive indexes. We are talking about the refractive index one. Very easy. One point six and another. One point six seven and one point seven four. Okay. These are available throughout the world. Acha, what will be the most possible lens material for the eyes and why? I have given you the MSCB chart. Look at that chart and then decide what will be our possible lens material for the eyes and why. I have repeated this question again. Tell me the material and tell me the answers. <coughs> Look at the chart and then decide what will be our uh, best possible lens material for the eyes. For the human eyes. Am I right? Why? Why am I Okay, uh, any more answers about my why? Correct, correct. So its error value is our already I have discussed about error value is 45. Okay, so nearer to the error value is MR8. So according to the error uh, value, MR8 series is Best possible lens material for our eyes. Okay, we are not talking about anything uh, index or any of our impedances. We are just talking about the possible lens material for our eyes. Okay, it's connected with the eyes value. Okay. Who is there any answer? Huh? Oh. Hitler. So who what is his contribution in our academics? 
Did you heard the, the um, Jai's tenses? Did you heard? Where is it from? Yes. Hitler itself is from the Germany. Na? He has introduced the concept, uh, he has introduced while uh, he was uh, in the war, in the history. In the history, while he has to have a war with our England, okay. So, while he was in the helicopter, he doesn't have any telescope or nothing to shoot to them. So, he had discovered the contact lenses about him. Okay, he was the one who first discovered about the contact lenses. He was the one who has discovered about the lenses. So, he has given the permission to the scientists to uh, discover about the ophthalmic lenses. And the contact is he has the greatest contribution in our optometry. Rather than he is a Hitler, but he has given our contribution to our ophthalmic lenses or contact lenses. Okay? So, one please, everyone has answered. <laughs> Should we continue? <laughs> why no? Why yes is not here? You are getting bored or what? Just smaller. Huh? Okay. Now we will talk about some bifocal lenses and also polar lenses. Okay. Lens measurement of some bifocal lenses. So, in our bifocal lenses, we have a distance and near both. It is a dual vision lenses. Okay, first year students, if you don't know, dual vision, it is for the distance or for the near also. So, here in the bifocal lenses, we have three types of bifocal segment is there. One is a round top segment is there, one is a flat top segment is there and one is an executive style segment is there. Nowadays, ex executive style are hardly available, but these three segments are available right now. Okay, write it down. Here we can see it's it's talked about the image jump. Okay, while you are looking at the any object. There is an image jump is here. So in adjective, it has a low image jump is here. So for uh, if the customer doesn't want the image jump, so they can switch to executive style segment in the bifocal lenses. Write it down. Okay, now we will switch to progressive lenses. What do you know about the progressive lenses, anyone? Do you know any difference between a bifocal and a progressive? Anyone have a brief this, uh, difference between a one? Uh -huh. In progressive lenses, there is a gradual bar change, but in uh, bifocals, there is only two vision lenses, one for distance and one is for the lens. There are uh, in intermediate visions also and distance and range. Correct. One more I have one to add on. There is a no image jump, while there is a demarcation line is there in the bifocal, there is an image jump is there. Here in progressive, we don't have any image jump. Okay, so progressive lenses are like our same single vision lenses it looks like. Okay, so here also cosmetically it's appealing than the bifocal lenses. Yes. 
Uh, did you see the picture and in, in the book? Did you have seen the picture? I know uh, Bardia and some PG students already have the basic knowledge of, about this. Okay, for first year, second year, it might be a new for them. Okay, so basically, it's a blank right out there. Okay, so here we have uh, some marking is here. Okay. Here we have uh, the distance reference circle is there. We have a distance power. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a fitting cross. Fitting cross is like we have to take the distance of, we have to take the measurement of the people here. Okay. That's the fitting cross. Here these two lines are temporal lines and lines are called the micro etching point. And here, we have a temporal side, we have an add power. Add power is coming like 2, 0. You might have seen 2, 0 means 20, it is looking like, but it's plus 2. Okay, if it is come 1, 5, then it's 1.5. It is, if it is come 2, 5, then it's 2.5. We have to denote it like that. And here we have a material and low, lower number. And here we have a near reference circle. These are all the palm markings. You can write it down. This is a basic of the... Okay, uh, I'm talking about the progressive lenses. Okay, so can anyone can tell me what is the full form of palm? Right. While we are taking the measurement, okay, here we can see, while in the spectacle we can see there is a, we have already talked about distance and near. And also while customer look in the uh, progressive lenses, there will be a blurring vision, there will be a area of soft vision like this one. While progressive lenses, there is an area of subvision is there. That will be due to the plus power or due to some cylindrical power, it has a surface astigmatism. While the customer will look, it will look like this. While we see, it will look like plain. While customer will look, it will look like this design. Okay, uh, let me do some practical thing. Okay, first of all, we take PD from the people, uh, people, uh, people, uh, people, uh, people, okay, and second thing, we do a fitting height and segment height. Fitting height measurement is done for progressive lenses, and segment height measurement is done for the bifocal lenses. So, anyone has a marker here? <laughs> So, uh, fitting height is taken from the pupillary distance to the end of the lens. Okay? Pupillary distance to the end of the lens, it's called the fitting height. While using the progressive lenses, we should always take the fitting height. And we have already discussed in the boxing system, we should take the effective diameter also. Okay? And while taking the bifocal lenses, we should take the 
segment and it is the lower lid from the uh, eyes to the end of the lens, uh, lenses. Just uh, writing down this one. Not only for the single vision, we have to take pupillary distance for all, bifocal also and for the progressive also. It's all very really good. Okay, now we will have some practical, okay, some practical, uh, while we take, we should take how we take fitting height and segment height and have a scale also, in scale and right? Okay. okay. Uh, one, two, uh, I need two volunteers. Well, if one has a specs and one doesn't have like that. Anyone? Uh, come here. Come here, you can come. Ah, you are Okay. Uh, even now, the practice how to take pretty night and set. Okay. First of all, while taking the pretty night. Is very specs, right? We have to uh, our instructor vision to look uh, from this side to look. Okay. You're uh, getting the spectacles here, or it's with the record. So here, what I have taken What I have taken, that is the fitting height I have taken. Pupil to pupil, I have taken. So it was, uh, I have taken a measurement of that. And then I have taken the bifocal segment height method. Segment height is from the lower lip to the end of the lenses. So like that, you all take the measurement, whoever has the spectacles. 
Mantan dan Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, uh, now we are come to end of the session, but uh, uh, I think you all have learned about, about this dispensing and about the uh, pre materials and dance materials. I hope it's enjoyable everyone. Is it enjoyable? Sure. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for your valuable feedback about it. Okay. Uh, last, I will ask Sudhi to tell about My voice is really very loud. So, uh, am I audible to you guys? Yes. Okay. So, uh, just write my number and mail ID so that because you are in the optimistic journey, you will meet somewhere. You know, we will generally meet. Either in hospital, either in all the stores or any any of those things. So, uh, right, my name is Sudeep Das. S U D double E P D A S. My mobile number is seven five double seven zero triple five eight six. Seven five double seven zero triple five eight six. My official mail ID is S U D double E P dot P A S at the rate landscart dot com. Done. Done. S U D double E P D A S. Sudip Das. Seven five double seven zero triple five eight six. S U D double E P Sudip dot Das at the rate landscart dot com. Done. I know everybody has got exhausted. Thank you so much. Really. No. Make a student a uh, lot of patience. Thank you. Clap for yourself. Okay. Uh, so so many jargons, techniques. Uh gaya? Kuch gaya? Sab upar se gaya? Okay. See. Things are funny here, okay? Things are really funny here when there is an org workshop or no university has aligned uh, corporates for you know, their own valuable inputs. Listen to that because the thing is here you will have fun, you will laugh. But the thing is when you will be in a position where uh, either in hospitals, either in your uh, companies or all the corporates, then if things are not aligned, then it would be embarrassment. Okay? Okay? So this is the optimum level. Universities are aligning 
uh, corporates uh, to give you the insight and the time for you guys so that you understand okay because here everything is funny everything you know you can uh, but no, at the professional journey, managers will shout, no, uh, your superior will tell you something, you will cry. Okay? So that's the thing, it's a harsh truth. Uh, being a student life is very fun, very you know, enjoyable, it's so fun. You know, we come here, we enjoy, we go back, and then you know, again, the day rolls on. Uh, but the thing is, you know, uh, it's a very fun, loving journey here. But when you land up in your corporate journeys and you be established somewhere, so that's a, you know, that's something which you cannot lose. That's a very serious journey. You are here to help those uh, folks who are having real issues, right? Uh, they are struggling with something. So you are in the very responsible profession where you know, you'll help any other people. You are not marketers. You are not sales folk, which we basically do, right? You are responsible persons, responsible citizens, so that you will you know, study so that you can help someone. So that fellow is really uh, in need of that help. So uh, study hard and you know, uh, behave really well, and then you know, uh, get this. You know what universities are aligning all those things. Get this everything out of it. Okay, hundred percent. So much will At least grab fifty percent so that this fifty percent will add on. And then more 50% when there is someone else will come, it will add on, make it 100%. Okay, so that's that's something I wanted to tell.